I don't know if anyone else could. Oh, fuck off, LD. <laughs> All right, okay. so so let's talk about the game, Mr. Uh, Mr. American Dota extraordinaire. We've got a last pick invoker for Empire. Ad Finum quickly replies with the Slardar. We had discussed Void. We had discussed Axe. What do you think about Slardar in this game? It's not bad here. I really like it against both Night Stalker and Lycan. I think it's super good against Lycan, to be honest, um, because he's a hero that you know, strength heroes, one of their natural weaknesses is minus armor. And Slider's the best at that. Plus, his stun is really long, and it would hit all of Lycan's units. So it also adds tons of like their damage out for output now is just nuts. They have two methods of minus armor. They have massive magical burst damage, and they can effectively take objectives, take stacks, scales of the late game, etc. Yeah, they have a good mix, yeah, mix of uh, physical and magic as well, which is quite nice. They have tons of burst and empire. They have some really good defensive abilities and counter initiate, but I expect this invoker will go cross exhort here. I actually think this is a really good cross wax game, but mm. I don't know if he'll agree. Yeah, we've seen, I would say, almost. I've seen almost exclusively cross exhort as of late, but uh, I still feel like the cross wax build brings a lot to the table. Especially, especially if you're trying to play like that more up tempo, like aggressive style. They don't really have the best setup for sun strikes this game, to be fair. So maybe this is one of those games where we will see the the quas seconds to battle. Time to oh, find before, out though. Before this game starts, can I give you one more newbie draft or um, wings, wings draft? draft? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Slark, visage safe. They put a brew mid jungle to beastmaster with dark seer off lane. What do you like about it? Who's picking Visage and Brew right now, man? <laughs> and who's oh, just, OG's picking like, Brew. Come on. OG's picking Brew. Who's winning games with Brew this patch? <laughs> LD. <laughs> I picked it too. All right, level one skirmish breaking out. It is going to be a first blood. Grabbed by Thug as Kinar goes down. They wanted the rune. And, well, they're going to pay for trying to get it. Scandal does grab the bounty, but Skylark getting the... Well, I would say freebie, but it's not free. As He's the one taking the Ion Shell Hate in the bottom lane. Kind of a role reversal from... Game number one in that regard. But I'd fit him. Aggro Trilane. Last game, the aggression from Empire did not work out at all. They had a very underleveled Phoenix and Bane. Do you like this aggression from Ad Finum better? Um uh, I it it depends on if it works, to be honest, but I think this is a lot more effective just because they're aggressing on a Lycan and Jug just dominates Lycan. Plus, Venge and Oracle are the types of support that are just super deadly at like level one and two. And once again, Empire has these really passive supports. They have an Iron Talon Night Stalker and a Phoenix. So they're just going to crush this safe lane really easily. It is not the same as Empire's decision in the last game at all. Yeah, seems, uh, I look at our mid lane here, we're going to have the not so classic, but always fun Zeus versus Invoker. For now, Scandal is taking the point in Quas. Does not have the magic stick yet and getting nuked pretty heavily, but. Still yet to see exactly what build he's going to go for this game as Ramses gets bullied a bit in the top lane. So the Lycan Quaswex. definitely struggling, and it is going to be Quaswex. I, I feel like this is the better build this game. They don't have great Sunstrike setup. They're a bit lacking on just teamfight disengage and initiation without it. Uh, it feels like it suits the draft better, even if it isn't that common right now. I think the counter initiation is really needed. They need to prevent the supports to get follow-up damage off a Slardar jump. And if you can catch the jug with it and force a spin. Oh man, look at uh, Spartan. Last game we saw Doom pretty much unchecked in the jungle, but this Iron Talon Night Stalker getting bullied by the Venge. Uh, Spartan will force him back, and he will rotate around to the other big cap, but not having that explosive free farm. As Ramsey's gonna get momentarily fortune ended here, and actually the Radiant Curve does get sniped. It was Maposhka going in, just poked it, and it, oh, it had a lot. I believe it had the Zeus bottle and boots. Thousand net worth on that courier. That was a big kill. Unfortunately, that, like wins the lane for Invoker. And up until that point, it was doing okay, but Scandal relatively low in regen. Uh, I guess he's gone for two points he cost, so he would have been okay in the lane, but it definitely helps secure it. And Thug's gonna have to take the walk of shame back to base. This does not feel good, man. Full HP Zeus, but just gonna buy the TP, the clarity, and. Just have to wait it out a couple minutes here. Oh, already Empire supports having a much better impact than game one. It's really nice to give a Quaswex specifically type of space. 
this just means they can get kills in the zoo very easily. Phoenix, Quaswack, yep, here it is, because they can cold snap and prevent him from moving really anywhere as yeah. the EMP comes through. Well, Thug in a lot of trouble, but can they finish the kill? Not quite. He's if actually... Phoenix is level 2, that works, but... Yeah. Is that tower protection armor maybe uh, coming in handy there? No, yeah. they just need Sunray, man. If they have Sunray, that's a kill for sure. Yeah. Well, a lot of times Spets to snipe the courier, I guess, so has not seen much experience just yet. Well, it, it all starts because of this aggressive tri lane and the ward they placed early on to block the pole. Because Phoenix just doesn't really have anywhere to go. They immediately got lane control and just can't get XP anywhere. He's actually going to swing back around on the mid lane. Wants to set up on Thug again. So we see bottom. Skylark getting bullied a bit here. Afterlife way up on CS. Almost 13 more. So getting a lot more farm uh, of, of a farm advantage than what we saw in the Darkseer versus... Uh, X match of last game, and as they move on to top lane, the spin comes out. Ramses will go down again. So Edfin, I'm able to find a kill in the tri lane here. And still Thug hanging yep. back at the tower. Courier is going to be respawning momentarily. And it will be coming out yep. with the bottle and the boots. If I were to write a scouting report about Empire, number one item would be shut down Ramses. If you don't, he's a really likely to just crush and take over the game. If he's playing from behind, doesn't matter how talented the kid is, can't have the same impact because he's in level. Yeah, it's, it's a lot like I mean, Iceberg's play style and spirit. And looking at the series, like he has not had the easiest lane. He was an offensive duel slash tri lane life stealer who didn't get that much experience, didn't get free farm. Uh, so Skylark throwing out the random crush here. Miposhka might be able to punish. There's the swoop forward with the Icarus dive on. Looks like Skylark gonna go down. Maybe next time a bit too late to turn that gank. So a nice pick there. Kind of in an unexpected fashion, but the first night time is hit and King R is on the move. That was actually, I think that part of the reason Iceberg and Ramses didn't work out on Spirit was because they both or kind of need played like the superstar of their team. Radiant there isn't enough space for two of those sunray types on one. This could be a really good setup. They have the Sunray. Oh, Spartan, he's poking. He's going to find not one, but two. And now the Sunray comes out. That's awkward, but they have some support here. This made it importantly for Maposhka. He's going to go down. Slardox joined the fight. Suddenly, four heroes mid for Team Adfenim, who respond in numbers. They will now move on to Scandal. They might be able to kill him off, too. The Zeus going to stay in rage. They will have the Crush. The Colt Snap not available. Lacking the Monofar does have the Stick Charges. Who's going to pop the... S or uh, pop the Fairy Fire, rather. Not the Stick. Won't matter, though. Adfenim. Punishing the deep dives and getting quite a few kills. And they do this uh, while well, the Lycan's actually gone to the jungle. So he's not really getting that much farm. But Afterlife is the silent winner here for Empire. He'll take the tower bottom off of that. That was really, really well played. Good rotations. I like that Adfinim's just... I mean, there were four people in the mid lane. Five and a half minutes into the game. They they always do that. Like, if, if, if you ever want to take an early fight, Adfinim will send, like, ridiculous numbers without any hesitation. It's just kind of their style in general. They like these early scrappy fights, and uh, they're, they're not going to just, you know, let heroes die for free. They, they will try and counter gank. It's uh, part of the really cool thing now is that every team has such a unique style. So the way you prep for a team is completely unique. You're actually fine. Previous Aww. patches really like that. And obviously, they're going to the bottom. Big dive here. Crush off the mark, though, as Afterlife sees the opportunity to dive onto Spartan. It's going to get the kill. The bench done under the tower, almost bringing Kanar down from the official tower shot. Zeus ult, but he's able to lift the Repops, the stick. Very disciplined play there by Kanar. We'll make it out. And uh, by the way, you're having some popping issues now. I'm not sure what that's all about. Oh, yeah, it's just because I was doing bad things to your microphone. Let's keep a PG 13 here, my friend. Who's your pick to win this game, LD? What do you think? Pretty even so far. 5, 500 XP for AF and 750 gold for Empire. Most of that, that tower. Oh, mid lane. Hold that thought. Thug getting brought down by the Sunray. So they do manage to find a kill here on the Zeus. I I think it's all about the Slardar for me. Like, looking at the Ad Venom draft, that's pretty much their only way to initiate. And he's had a really rough start. So if they can get Skylark's Blink at a reasonable time, I'd like them. But oh, as he finds this Koma Poshka, might help along. But... If he doesn't have a relatively decent blink time, I feel like they just don't have a way to take fights. Mid lane, though. There's the tornado coming through onto two. Spartan able to finish off the Phoenix, but it cost them the slaughter again. Spartan going to the Ancients will end up dropping. Man, this, this nighttime has been super successful. Team Empire creating a lot of space for the team, and now 
Uh, I guess in good news for Adfinim, they have taken the tower top. Madara just left to that lane on his own. Ramses was jungling. Ramsey's also struggling a lot. Uh, I mean, I guess I would I would argue like it's a decent comeback hero does farm pretty quickly, but I don't know. How, do you do you agree with that assessment, or are you favoring? Uh, well, what's really nice about what Advenim did is that they uh, they got the jug to a position where he could one v one the lichen easily, and then just consistently forced a four on four around the map. So even though they lost in the apartment, Jug's been just crushing this lane. So lichen just hasn't really recovered that effectively. Plus they got the tower, and now they're gonna smoke up and probably kill him. Yeah, nobody yeah, really expects die. this smoke gank from a, a three-position Slardar this early in the game. Ramsey's trying to put, commit the ultimate here. Oh, again, trying to miss on the crush. Skylark a bit yeah. off the mark on those. That's three now that he's missed. And now they might get punished for it. Madara trying to retreat out. He's already used the Blade Fury and oh, trying to drop that Healing War, but he can't because of the Cold Snap. And again, the crushes are just not connecting here. Skylark's going to go down. That's two cores dead. And now Saw Spartan could well be next. Look for the body blocks from Ramses. Oh, it doesn't quite find the Warcraft 3 surround. And Spartan will barely creep away. And they're doing this without Afterlife, who's well on his way to that mech. So he's hit level 8 already. Nine minutes in. Super good start here for the Darkseer. I, I'm just worried about the Slardar, man. He's he's not on pace for a decent blink. Uh, and it looks like it will be a blink, not an arm lift, but not on pace for a decent timing at all. If that move actually puts Empire kind of firmly in control of this game, the big disparity is that the Slardar is just not even here at this point. He might as well be a support. He went Tranquils as well. And the Darkseer almost, he'll have a mech in another two or three minutes. So we see the Vanguard build again from Madara. Not only though, Jug uh, might find him. Yeah, he is looking for Afterlife. Does not have a TP scroll. Has to continue abusing the Fog of War here. Well, actually, a Surge. We'll get him out to safety, so. Dodge his way from the Jug. But yeah, thoughts on the Vanguard build? We've been seeing it a lot, like the Anti-Mage battle, uh, Vanguard and the Battle Fury build. Uh, do you feel this is a, an every game kind of build? Is it more situational? Uh, just curious about your general thoughts, since it seems to be an emerging trend. It's pretty good against both Night Stalker and Lycan. It's a lot of good damage reduction. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have that item that just sort of scales you a little bit, gets you ready to take fights. It used to be drums, but the nerf really hurt agility heroes that want to pick it up early. It's still good on stuff like uh, Invoker and even on ports. Times likes it too, but... But if you're more of like a, a damage dealer, item. it's not as cost efficient anymore. Exactly. So Vanguard is just a way to beef up and scale to your next really good item. Jug with just a quill. Like, also, a quill is still really, really valuable. Yeah, it only got very slightly tweaked, and I think it was, what, uh, minus one armor, plus one agility was in the last patch? Or maybe, yeah, I think that was what it was, so. It's, it's still pretty damage. much the same. Oh, plus one damage. That's right. So it's pretty much the same item, whereas drums has been very heavily reworked and doesn't really fill the same role anymore. They are exactly. moving on to bottom lane, Afterlife. He's out pretty far. He's opted for the early hood here, actually, as he goes in with the stun. Omni Slash comes through. Hood ain't going to save you from that. Heavy physical damage. So it looks like he does want to pipe to try and deal with the Zeus, but that's where Ed Finham, they have physical damage as well. I'm just concerned about the Slardar, like you said. I really don't like Tranquil's build on Slardar, especially when you're playing from carry position sense, since you have the safe lane, but died a couple times game is really they're gonna smoke towards him as well this should be a really easy scandal's also going orchid i like that choice forces the zeus to go defensive item next really doesn't want to have to do that he wants to buy a blink or a force staff yeah, may even have to consider like a yule scepter perhaps but we'll see as they move in under guise of night looking for a pick off madara immediately blade fearing and they're gonna get clipped by the tornado here they do lob out the fortune's end and We'll try to chase, but oh, Spartan, he's in pretty deep. He tried to dive after King Our team not with him, and now needs to get himself out. Scandal poking from the side. Skylark even joining this fight as well. Great play by the Oracle. Again, the Oracle saves have been on point this series for maybe next time to keep them in these fights, try and turn the engagements around, but they just can't seem to lock down the target. Finally, Skylark will die on the slaughter. Another death for their key initiator. Can they at least get the afterlife kill? He just scurries around the tower. The rest of the team busy chasing elsewhere. They want to kill off Thug, and it looks like they're going to get that pesky Zeus. Just afterlife, just wasting their time, creating space while the rest of the team finds the backliners. And now moving again onto Spartan, the Ion Shells are stacking up. The Lycan damage is massive, and down will go. Still no Omni Slash ready. Madara could well be next, but he's rather tanky with the Vanguard. Sumpire may be content with their three kills 
and walk away. Scandal still chasing, though. Here's going to be respawning now. Slaughter's already TP'd out to the bottom lane to try and farm when Raposhka's setting up on him. So they could consider a further dive here on the top lane, but Scandal will be content with their bouncy. We'll back away. Very hectic fight, but again, Empire just completely outlasting that Venom and winning these engagements convincingly now. And they have mech. Well, he's still not going mech, man. Is anyone going mech? Don't think okay. so. Yeah, just straight into the, the hood. I mean, maybe hood into mech, but seems very odd to do that rather than just getting the mech first at that point. I, I really like mech, especially when you have a sunray behind it. It's a lot of sustain. Think that, eh, I guess it's okay. They're going to just want to make a play for Roche pretty soon. They have the Vlads up on Ramsey. He's still behind, but he can start to accelerate, especially if they take... I, I just really wish they had a mech right now. And the Night Stalker is rushing Ags, so... They actually don't come online until the Necro and the Ags. Let's see if Empire can seize their opportunity here. As they move up bottom, they want to kill Skylark again. He's already got four deaths. I feel like I jinxed him ever since I mentioned the blink timing. Mean, he just keeps on dying, and this is going to be death number five. This Slaughter is not even feeling like a hero at this point. Night Stalker just confidently charging in on him. Gets the kill once more. The caster's curse is very real, but let's see if Madara gets caught out as well. Oh, actually losing all his mana here and going to be forced to back away. Does not have mana for an Omni Slash. Actually, will opt to pop the Healing Warn instead to try and save the team. Maybe next time disengaging, but it's just Empire in full control, constantly driving them back. The... Quaswex and Voker having huge zoning control and just impact in these fights. Feels like Advenom just constantly on the defensive. It's definitely a different style, but Quaswex and Voker is still super good in the right player's hands. They have. Where would you rank Scandal as CI as mid players all time? All time. Oh, hold on. Miposhka. Oh, caught again. They're gonna chase this Skylark. He really wants a kill. Come back here, Firebird. But there's the vacuum. Crush again, a swing and a miss. Not sure he would have continued chasing anyway, given his health, but Skylar just having a rough game. Uh, Scandal right now, I feel like he's definitely having a resurgence. Like I would say top five, six mids in, in my eyes as to like his recent play. I feel like he's stepped it up a lot. Teams have been target banning him too. Like we, we saw this game, three or four mid heroes get banned and they still managed to fifth pick a, an invoker and plays an unusual style, still has a big impact. He's, to me, like definitely one of those like high aggression type mids. Oh, good crush bottom. Skylark onto Miposhka. And Miposhka has the egg. He will let it go, but they keep going back to the well. Dar hacks it down. Yeah, I don't know. How do, where, where do you rank him? Uh, I, I think it's so dope he's back in Empire. He even played for Empire back in Han, you know? He's been with that org for so long. Just doesn't feel right if he's not playing for them, but... I think that other than G and Dendi, I think Scandal's in that group better than pretty much anyone outside of those three. For CIS, you mean, or in the world? CIS. Okay. In the world, uh, it's hard to say, man. There's so many good mid players. There's also I don't even think a lot of different styles. Five. Like, I feel like if you're looking for more of like an aggressive, like mid-game, like tempo controlling type mid, that I put Scandal pretty high up there. But you know, obviously. He, he plays a very different style from, like, say, if, uh, if Miracle goes to mid lane. Oh, Omni Slash on the bottom side. They find the Invoker kill. Can they get Afterlife here as well? The Blink Dagger's almost out after that one. Skylark getting a very crucial last hit. So finally, a kill, a clean one for Ed Finnum. And they finally are going to get the Slardar Blink. It's a huge deal. I mean, you have to remember, it was a safe lane, Slardar. So it's, it's not like he didn't get space. But he didn't have an easy time against Afterlife as they move in. Onto the creep wave. Phoenix gonna swoop away. Empire, do they wanna actually defend this tower? The egg's up fairly soon. There's a glyph available. Seems like they want to. Should they defend this tower? I don't know if this is the fight tower. they wanna take. They don't have the mech. Light gun has no mana. Up a lot, but no ultimate. Yeah. No, they're gonna let it go. I would have liked to see Slaughter jump that. That was a free kill on the Night Stalker. He's pretty tanky though, but he goes to minus armor, so he dies really quickly to Jug. He'll have Battle Fury soon on Jug as well. So things, it's actually still a rather even game. That was a big movement for Advenom though, to pick up two kills, one on the Phoenix and one on the, on just the tower. 
big gold swing. Yeah, and, and Skylark getting the last hit. Like, that That basically salvaged the blink timing by, like, three minutes, I would say. It's, like, almost 600 gold. And he was not exactly hitting creeps in lane, so... <laughs> now he's got a teardrop and a blink. He's good to go. Or rain drop. I feel like a, a tier, tier or two should be shed for this inventory status. But... Yeah. I, I, I refuse to play Slardar in that way. If I ever get behind him, I don't care. I still go are you, treads. Are you, are you, like, a fan of even... Well, I guess it's, we don't see the like the Moon Midas build anymore now that the armlet's so good on Slardar. So just treads, treads armlet pretty much every game. Um, for the most part, I think you can go back for Midas sometimes, and I also think four staff sometimes are the good, and other times you're KB. Oh, they want Scandal. Can oh, that's they good, get man. him? He's got Ghost Walk invoked, and there's the silence. So see you later. No detection right now. Actually, there are some sentries on the in the stash of maybe next time. I wonder if he's going back for a Midas. That'd be very strange, but he has a gloves of haste, so either that or lightning, which is possible but not likely. Oh, for I scandal. Go for yeah. Hmm. I mean, Invoker's just so level dependent that to me he's one of those one of those heroes where like I would almost never say Midas is bad. Right? Maybe sometimes it's a bit late, not as effective, but. Can you think of a hero that needs levels more than Invoker? Mm, not really. I guess Meepo or something like that, but Meepo already gets them anyway without needing a Midas, so... Also, Maybe Clinks. The days of the, the, the Clinks Midas seem like they're they're kind of dead. Yeah, it's always definitely... Always like the Deso and just constantly pressure early game. There's, it's strange because there's a lot of agility carries that are probably very viable right now, but very pe few people testing out like some of the older strats, like Morphling, Luna. I mean, everyone's saving strats for Manila, right? At this point, at least the te the teams who are going. Yeah, well, I mean, every team has like a pocket fucking Drow strat. Do you think every teams? Do you team. think teams have enough pocket strats? Like, I feel like there's a lot of events where I just see like. Pretty much a team will live or die by like, the, like the, not every team, but a lot of them will just kind of pick this exact same style more or less every game. Maybe a unique hero here or there, but the strategy doesn't change. Like, should teams be experimenting more or going for crazy strats, or is it better just playing what you're comfortable with in general? I think you should experiment, man. I wing Dota for you, life. Yeah. Have 10 to 20 just like really fucking good drafts, and that's a really nice fall back. They might kill the Slardar. He's oh. an ult. Skylark, he needs help. Maybe next time is going to save him. Does he commit back into this fight? There's an egg available. Maposhka hanging onto it. Might be able to kill him. Skylark, no, gets a bit of a heal up from the Oracle as the ult ends, but it's going to cost him the bench. The Juggernaut as well. Empire in full run at you mode, and it is working at nighttime. Slardar again getting initiated on. Not the one doing the initiation. And King R, just the Slardar's managed to complete his Blake. He's got an egg and a gem to go with it, purchased by Maposhka. Yeah. I did not notice that, but that is nuts. He's out farming the Slardar. At this point, as a as an iron talent for position for position night stalker, sick stuff. And now they move in mid lane. Tornado coming through. Now the sunray diving onto maybe next time. Well, better luck to him next time because he is dead. Four down and maybe looking at the slardar kill here. Skylark, don't do it, man. He wants to go back in. He's got a Zeus respawn. Oh, he's gonna be playing with fire. He had cold snap up. Just didn't use it. I think was debating going on him, Turn. but heroes are respawning. And Madara's gonna chase this. Yeah, he man. played Furies. He's going in. He's got the Omni ready, but can they quickly silence him? Yes, siree. Now Madara gonna go to work with auto attacks, but Skylark has committed. The egg comes through. Will they be able to kill that off? Yes, they will. Empire getting punished here. Now the swap back. They still have an Omni slash ready, but Tornado trying to lock down this jug. They don't want him to get it off, and the Wolves working on him. He's got a Blade here to dodge the Iron Shield damage, but he can't kill off the Wolves, and he's easily with that. We'll get one. Looking for another. Zeus there to cover their retreat. Chucker not surviving for now. And even looking to walk into the pit. They've got to drop the healing ward after they kill the wolf. No, or they can drop it on the high ground. Clever stuff by Madara. Really well done. Nothing the wolf can wolves do about that. Wolves are so annoying. Ramses is playing this game very well with his micro. It feels like the wolves have almost done more than the actual Lycan hero. And at this point... <laughs> oh! Exactly. Afterlife. The sick back wall. Up onto the hill. Trapping in Spartan. Who's slowly dropping here. Actually, not so slowly any longer to the Sunray. The Tornado comes through, connects Shut on up. two, gonna prevent any sort of TP out. He runs through the wall. Death by the wall or death by the ray, you decide. He chooses the wall. 
And Miposhka will still take the last Rush hit there. <laughs> Even Rush wants a piece it's of this pie. Oh, no. oh god. Add Venom. That was, that was a brutal little move. It's like, oh, what a great place for a Healy Ward. Oh, what a great place to vacuum two heroes. Seems good. I've actually gone into practice mode and practiced that. It's way harder than it appears. The vacuum onto the hill, you mean? Mm -hmm. They made it harder at some point, right? Yeah. Because I, I, I feel like it used to be... Oh, by the way, wild arcane boots? Yeah, I'll take those. So this is afterlife. And now he's, he's got the pipe and the mech. So he goes... Into the hood, back to the mech, now into the pipe. So the team fight has just powered up by several orders of magnitude for Empire. Is they're going to chase here on the Skylark. Slardar caught out again with the punish. He will go down. And now the whole Lycan crew wants to party. They're looking to get a little bit rowdy here as they move on to Madara. Going to Blade Fury, but relatively early they can look to Orchid him in just a second. They might need the Venge's help as well. Can they burst out Scandal? There's the Venge stun. But now the egg's been committed. So what do you do? Do you try to focus Scandal, let the egg go off, or do you turn back the other way? Go for the Invoker. No, nope. not going to get either, it seems. Three down with a Roche as well. Empire just wrecking at Venom, and it's going to be four. Maybe next time getting chased out. Infuse Raindrops quickly being chewed through. A triple kill for Scandal. Easy peasy for Empire. That was uh that was a fight right there. That's they finally got an egg off and that sort of just turns the fight around because you can't fight underneath it. And it seems like the Night Stalker is the Gems Ag's Night Stalker, yeah man. It's just you you're playing with map hack and true sight. It's just it's so easy to win when you have map hacks. And he got it so fast too, and, and did it not by farming really, but by constantly pressuring the lanes after that first night hit. Yep. So. None of the cores have any self-save at the moment, and if they jump the Oracle, he can't save himself, so they, they'll they kill anything they catch out just immediately without somebody right there behind it, and it's a really easy way to take a team fight, especially when you have a Dark Seer and a Phoenix for counter-initiation. And they're about to they pipe try. Grieves, like, <laughs> yeah. how do you go on that? You just don't. Well, at Finn, they it know only one direction, starter, and that is in, and they're going in right now. Sprint, crush, they get the jump on King R. Boy, they would love to grab that gem. He's pretty tanky, but not tanky enough. So Skylark says, I'll take that. Thank you very much. And a crucial Maybe. kill to the Pride Empire of their map pack. Well, part, part of the map pack. Bottom tower is under attack. It's crazy because Night Stalker is one of the heroes. I I'd love to see the stats on this, but I think it's banned more in the first phase than in all the other ones. Like. I've seen it banned first phase in probably at least eight drafts. I've never seen it even thought about any of the other times. Except for one series at MDL where EG and I believe E Home like alternated first picking it. And then it falls out of fashion. I've seen it banned phase two occasionally, but it's all, it's only been against uh it was only against FY when he was just Iron Talon, like Beastmaster or, or uh, Night Stalker jungle every game and they only banned the Beastmaster one game, so he took the Night Stalker phase two. Next game they banned that uh they banned that phase. Uh, actually, it might have been phase one as well. But yeah, uh, generally it just seems like the hero just goes through these periods of like, oh, we don't care about Night Stalker. Oh my god, they just destroyed us with the map control. Let's ban Night Stalker. It's like a very reactive ban a lot of the time. It just changes the way you have to play Dota. It's it, like Pudge. In a lot of ways. You know? I mean, if you were good anyway. <laughs> nah. Pudge is good. You just... It's risky. It's like if you make the shots, it's a great hero, but... It's a lot easier to maybe just pick something with a, a point-and-click stun, or just heals. Just be like uh, Overwatch's version of Pudge Roadhog, where his hook is like gigantic AoE, so you basically can't miss. Then more people would play Pudge then. Like Ramsey's is huge. By the way, he's got, I didn't realize, he has Necro 3 and 2k already. I remember how bad, like, it's, it wouldn't be that impressive, but they had a terrible start for him. Aggressively try lane, forced in the jungle. He was level 5 when Jug is 7. He's now basically even, only a thousand gold down on net worth. He's had a hell of a comeback game, and that is the nice thing about Lycan, is you give him a little space, he'll take those objectives, can catch up very quickly relative to other carries. They're going to move in now, though. The Siege has commenced. Skylark with a quick crush here to start things off. But the Sunray heals all and protects all. Ramsey's basking in his glory. We'll be back to two-thirds HP. Now an urn going to bring him up even further. They have popped the pipe. Greaves are completed, though. So more sustain here to come. 
and Pyre. Blink on Night Stalker. He's going straight for the Oracle. Do they want to dive this? They've caught out the Slardar. That's the big hero to try and commit on, and Skylark almost dead instantly. Well, even if he lives and goes back to the well, that's going to be all the timing that Empire needs to take this first lane of Rax and start to close out the game in a comfortable position. Now they snipe the melee, and they will very carefully, patiently retreat. Still holding the Aegis. They've uh, only got it for about 30 more seconds, though, so a good time to back off. Dirk's here is so strong at this point in the game. Grieve's pipe. It's so much effective HP and regen. And it's just like, it's so hard for Skylark to start the fights because you've got the, the Night Stalker with the eggs. Well, as I say that, he finds a solo Kainar. That's a hero he can gank, so he'll get the Night Stalker kill, but... I mean, when they're actually grouped up, like, how do you how do you get the jump as a Slardar? It's really tough for him. I'd like to say you just don't fight at nighttime, but that's pretty much impossible. Yeah, it's that's not... what's so depressing about it. He's got the level 2 darkness now, so it's pretty much always going to be up when you need it. You get a minute of time, to be honest. Like, every eight minutes, you get about a minute. And you have to make sure you utilize it. And that's assuming, like, everything's ready to go. Your lanes are pushed out. Uh, you haven't lost the hero. You have wards. You know where to go. It's a minute where everything has to be perfect in order to get that opportunity. And that's just to be able to take a team fight on even terms. Not even guaranteed that you, you win the fight, mm -hmm. either. <laughs> just to have a shot at a fight that you might win. That's tough. Well, for Empire Swindles, it seems like pretty clearly just wait for the next Roche, get that Aegis, go for a second lane of Rax. They're in the driver's seat. They're in control of this game. How do Ad Finim get back in it? Oh, man. Do I'm you giving you to, the tough questions today. Do you want me to give you false hope and hype? Or do you want, like, no, give, give it to me. Give it to me straight. Answer. Brutal Murrican honesty. If Lycan just gets a BKB and they get the next Aegis, they would win the game. GG. It's over. Like as soon as you see that BKB in his inventory, just disconnect. Yeah. There's no way they can lose without just gross mis misplays. Because Adfinum doesn't have any anything even close to resembling a Wombo combo. So if they don't get five man stunned by Slartar somehow. <laughs> I mean, he's had a couple two, three hero stuns. Five man, that's asking a lot. The Invoker pick was sick here. Really changed the way this played. Same with the Knights. Yeah. yeah. He's had a big impact. His Empire are going to press in on the mid lane. They have the Lycan BKB, I believe, coming in right now. It gets delivered. The Necro Book popped. They don't have that second Aegis yet, though. So we'll see if that affects their plans. And it appears it does. They chip. They force the TPs. But they're going to wait. They TP out. Back away. And just spend a little more time here farming up before the next rush. But they've gotten the aggressive lane wards down. Going to be up to Skylark to try and find all these. Or maybe this is. It's uh, not an easy road for a Slardar in this position. He does have a gem. That's cool. And a Force Staff. It's for 86. So maybe if he gets a Daedalus in the next <laughs> couple minutes. <laughs> if Slardar gets a Daedalus. That's your plan. Your tranquil Slardar with a Daedalus. And maybe uh, a moon shard too. Oh, okay. It's a good mischance stalker. So, oh man, I might have to pick more night stalker, dude. This hero seems crazy. <laughs> All right. So, so your game plan for Ad Venom is get a moon shard, MKB, Daedalus on your Slardar, who is sitting at 7k net worth at 32 minutes. That's the plan. That that yeah, is I mean, what I'd... you. <laughs> And blessed with all your infinite wisdom and knowledge as the Slayer of EG, as a, a top player going to the Manila Major, that's the game player. I mean, that's what it would take to win. It's not a realistic plan, <laughs> you know, but it's still something to strive for. And maybe if they got close, they could win with just the Moonshard and the MK. <laughs> just. The biggest air quotes of all time. All right. It's all about the tranquils. You see the writing on the roll on the wall. As soon as you, you saw the tranquils, it's just like, GG. Yeah. I've seen some players doing well who still favor it, uh, but that's more when it's like the off lane, like no support Slardar. Not when he's given a 
I, to be fair, not the easiest 1v1, but still like a, a safe, safe lane to farm. I mean, you ask Moor Bulba, we'll say the same thing. We all, every offlaner knows that feeling of just feeding and then becoming completely worthless. And you just know your game's grim. How do, it's how, just how do you sad cope? he couldn't recover. How yeah, do, I mean, I don't really know. I think he actually had to buy like a Midas to just stay relevant in the game, but then he... I don't even know. Oh, he they goes. are gonna find Maposhka here, so a sweet grab. Blowing up Roche the Phoenix. Adds, Roche spawns, dead for 60. Alright, this got was me. the dream, the dream timing for Ed Finham. Could be. Phoenix out for a minute, does not have buyback. So he's just completed the Perseverance. Are they gonna see the fat boy respawn? Yes, they will. And they have Slard Avenge. They may well take this. Ed Finham, fate conspiring to give them a good shot. To give them a chance. To commit to this or back away though? Uh, it seems like they want to commit. They're leaving the jug in the pit, but after he moves in, and again he gets the swag back up onto the hill. All right, guys, Roshan will be delayed a bit here. Slardar able to jump off with the four step, but Madara, he's trapped up there, so it's Venge's turn to occupy the cliff. But this is buying time for the Phoenix. Gonna be up very soon as Sunstrike coming out. Deputy Blast is there, stalling this one down, even pushing the Venge into the wall and making a Venge illusion on the hill that they can't easily kill, giving them the Aura too. What a great Darkseer performance this has been, as maybe next time is getting forced back by the Lycan army. Dropped pretty low, the Juggernaut trying to turn this one onto Scandal. Can he finish him off? Invoker's in pretty deep, and he will end up going down Madara, getting the bounces he needs, and then, oh, kills off the Necro book there. Almost died instantly as a result. So Empire chase forward, Phoenix rejoining the fight, still has an egg available. Fire Spirit's going out onto Skylark. Zeus blinking in, trying to finish the job. Might get Ramses as well. Just one more nuke, he'll finish it. Somehow this Zeus is full HP, has not been punished yet, and Ed Venom salvaging the fight. My goodness, wow. that looked ugly, but it all started with a Phoenix getting picked bottom. Uh, well, it is worth mentioning they've lost a Ranger X tops during this time, but still, well worth it for Ed Venom. They're going to buy back on their bench. They're going to try and take this Roche. Zeus. Level 16 with the uh, Veil and an Aether Lens. That is peak damage output for Zeus. Unless you start to get into like Dagons and stuff and Octrin Core for. Him. But and he lived is, the whole he's fight. Peak. Yeah, he did so much damage. It's it's insane. It, average DPS in a game of Dota. Zeus is like 200 ahead of second, and he's in first place. So if you go through a 20, 30 second team fight, just casting spells at all times. He could have easily done like at least 10,000 damage. Yeah, they also actually managed to catch out Scandal that fight. And generally, he's just been he's been so good about staying back, not getting caught, but just found himself in between the Slardar Crush, the Amp Damage, and the Zeus with, as you mentioned, the Veil and the Aetherland. So, you catch an Invoker in that position, you are going to melt. Well, that fin him. Pretty much everything they needed to get back in the game there. Uh, Well-timed Roshan respawn, the whole team ready to go around the pit. The... Very good handling of the vacuum onto the high ground. It looks like they... Did they get another gem? Yeah, I think Maposhka bought a second one, so... Skylark's still holding on to the original stolen gem. So, yeah, they even kept the gem as well. What a dream comeback story this could be for the Greeks. I'm very curious to see what your spies here. I think a Bloodstone might actually be a good option. A Bloodstone? For the respawn time, hmm. I guess you might just have to buy like a beak. You mean for Zeus, right? Yeah, for Zeus. Oh, Kanar is scouting. It's nighttime right now. Has the invis rune as well. But running into an age of Zeus, they already struggled the last fight, not having to deal with it. Are they going to try and contest here? They're creeping around. They're thinking about it. Ramsey's not with them yet, though. And Kanar poking his head out, just eyeing his prey, but this Invisorin is about to expire. So it looks like they may be forced to retreat in the end. Are they going to fight this, though? Like, it, it just feels like Empire, like, we should fight, we should fight, and then someone's like, no, guys, don't fight there. Don't fight there. That's a bad idea. A Abyssal finished on Jug, and he has a lot of gold. I mean, honestly, I don't even know, dude. This is the type of game that's just really fun to watch because... 
it'll all come down to the play. We'll see what happens now. Uh, there's the blink in from KNR. Moving on to maybe next time. There's the back wall as well. Gets dropped, but they're going to look to turn it. Poppy the Zeus ult. Ramsey's caught in the thick of it. BKBs and does commit. Where does he go next? The egg zoning number one back onto Sus Spartan. They'll munch him down too. Supports have been dealt with, and Madara has yet to find a major kill. Just the Darkseer dead. Zeus, though, full HP, has the Aegis, but this time they're going to silence him. Yule's in himself to clear it out. He's going to drop back and then move forward. And Scandal low, but not finished off yet. They have gotten rid of that Aegis, so it's a 3 for 3, including the Aegis. A 3 for 2 if you don't count it. Got it just done! Just back! <sighs> Oh, Skylark. Skylark. It's the third time this game. You gotta just stun. You can't be going for the ult first. That would have been another kill. But they keep the jug alive. And they are gonna push the tower here. Creep slowly moving out on the top lane. Uh, also at the door on the bottom, but looks like Ad Finn, I'm on the verge of possibly getting their first Rex. No, they're not gonna chance it. They'll back away, they'll push out these side lanes. So in the end. It's a three for three, but they get rid of the Aegis, so Adfinum won't have that for a push. And they don't actually lose a structure here. No tier three down, no Rex just yet. Empire still hanging on. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure who's going to win this game, LD. Only uh, Adfinum supports are really poor. That's a big downside moment, but at the same time, they're really just auras and defensive abilities to allow the yeah, I mean, we saw last fight, if they get caught, like, they just they just explode. But if they don't, they will sit back, stall, keep the Zeus alive, let the Juggernaut do his thing, and they can still take the fight. That last fight, see, both Jug and Zeus, the Yules, have ways to save themselves. That last fight, the Oracle died, the Night Stalker was able to force Zeus to self Yules, and then Invoker could just finish him off with an Orchid. And if that happens without the Aegis, fight. So it's really important that the Oracle stays alive and allows both cores to save the defense for like it, the next round. And and good news, they they do not have a gem anymore. Another gem lost by by Empire after that fight is there's now a second one just in the Radiant Fountain. So they are gonna I mean if not have the map control edge, at least be able to stay relatively on par with the Lycan. So good news there for Adfinum too as they move towards well, the top if, lane if, while Empire take this chance to smoke. If you're Empire and I'm like their coach, six man. I'd be beating a war drum, just saying like, kill this dude, repeating it over and over, because that's what they need to do. If they don't kill Zeus, I, they might actually lose. Speaking of the Zeus, it's a it's an Octarine now, so finished AC on the Lycan though. That's a huge item. Let's see if he's gonna get a chance to actually hit. Last fight, he lost almost half his health instantly before BKBing, and they are gonna commit the pipe here, Empire. They just want to fight while Roshan is down. This is quite a change from the way they're approaching it earlier. As Ramsey's going to get caught there. One crush, one bolt. Ramsey's almost dead. Now he gets a pistol. Somebody help this wolf. No, the wolf is slain. Oh my god, he died real fast there. The egg will go off, but it's on to two BKB targets. You simply don't care. They're going to back. Look to turn it. Skylark actually force snapping himself forward and back into this one. They've dove deep all of a sudden. Face rushing Emperor on to Afterlife. They go the damage output from the Zeus, from these physical damage cores is just too much. They just exploded, Rabsies. Skylock's not back. The right move. Oh, he's Follows got up. he's got vision. Blake crush and then yeah. the bash for good measure. Skylark is getting his sweet sweet revenge right now on Afterlife, and it'll be Madara who grabs the kill. So, what was once a fifteen thousand gold advantage for Empire is now about to be zero experience already favoring wow. them. Complete. 180 on this game. And Madara has just taken over as well. I can't believe how much damage this Juggernaut's doing. He got a really good ult off there, did a ton of They've... It just... It's like that first Blink Crush with the Zeus Bolt Veil. Like, it's instantly lost half health. And they don't and this... they don't have Avenger or an Oracle to, to save him or prolong the fight as easily. And these items... Uh, Octarine, Veil, and... Um... Aether Lens, like this is peak Zeus. He will never be able to do more damage with his ability than right now. And I don't know. I want to see the damage dealt after the crazy. It might hit like 50k if this gets another 10, 20. He's definitely had. He's he's had a, a crazy impact on the game, and 
Especially considering that they were they were pressuring him mid. Remember, his courier got sniped early in the game by the Phoenix. The Phoenix ganked him like three times. Night Stalker was all up in his business. But despite all of that, Thug has been able to stay relatively on par with a Midas Invoker. Has certainly done way more damage. And on top of that, you know, the hero has other utilities. Been dewarding for the team, helping them scout out Roshan around the pit. He's, he's, he looked great on the puck in game one. He's looking pretty damn good on the Zeus here in game number two. And it was a, it's a pretty tough game for Zeus as well, to be honest. Eh, to an extent. It's mostly just the Invoker. Stalker. It feels like now he's okay, because now the supports are highly leveled. He's got the Blink and the Yule, so he has some disengage of his own. But especially that window where Night Stalker and Ags at 20 minutes, he has, like, basically no mobility at all. And the supports are relatively low level. That was where I was most worried for Thug, but he's a lot more comfy at this point. So it's going to be a smoke here from Ad Finum, but they're smoking into darkness. And I mean that not only the ability, but also the total lack of vision here. Running in blind. Madara not even under cover of smoke. Down into the river. Ad Finum, very either confident or desperate. Not sure to take a fight. But it's not going to end up amounting to much. They kind of poke near the pit, then they back away. As Empire, they're going with the, the do -si do here. That's their turn to engage. They may get the jump. It's turned into nighttime or daytime at the worst possible moment. Right as they breach high ground, they look to engage onto Sauce Spartan. The old comes out. Now the knight hits again for real. So they'll have the vision back that they need to try and take this one. Madara controlled. Locked down for a bit, but he's going to work on the Phoenix Egg. Oh, nope, decides. Thinks better of it. Backs off. Omni slashing through, but it's hardly doing anything. And he's completely isolated, tripped away from his team. Already has two supports down there. Move on to the jug, and he's in a lot of trouble. Got a Blade Fury go for the TP out. Just wants to get the hell away, and he will escape successfully. Lycan was finished off elsewhere while that was going on, but now they can cage the Zeus, kill off Mario. Thug, you ain't going anywhere this time, my friend. Except back to the well. The jug actually just has to go for the Lycan. Ramses ran straight for the supports, killed the Venge immediately, then killed the Oracle, then killed Slardar with... Went down eventually, but they really need Jug to do damage to this guy. They just have to abyssal the Lycan. They have no save for him and just kill him. That's, their, that, that's what they have to do to win the fight. Yeah, that hero just wrecks everything they've got. It was a really awkward like timing where it actually it kind of looked bad for Empire, but then the, the clock hit nighttime for real and then stabilized a lot from there. Seems like it is one of those games where it just more so than like pure items, it, it comes down to the initiation and the focus fire and fights. As oh, speaking of which, they get the swap off. Kanar gonna get caught out, but the turn comes here. Scandal commits the hacks a whole lot of nuke damage onto Spartan. Can't even kill him though. So Blink Crush chasing for more. They bought back on the Slardar Empire. Pretty happy with that. They're gonna back away. Roshan. What was his respawn time there, LD? What's that? Like 20 seconds? Slardar? It was fairly low. I think he bought back towards the tail end of it, yeah. So. Oh, they have a hex ready for the jug. Can they punish? Can they maybe even find the Slardar? He's on top of Scandal now. He goes in with the Blade Crush. They could kill him. That's a dieback. The tornado coming through. Oh, but they already killed him. Too yeah. late. Gem hits the deck. Was that was that the gem they stole back, or was that a third gem? I think that was the gem they stole back. Roche is up. Timing. Yeah, they couldn't have bought a new one, so. Uh, just losing their second gem again, but. Invoker's still one level away from deafening black. The dream. Huge pickup. Yeah, just needs that one more point and exhort. That Venom will start to work on the Roshan here. Night Stalker has a buyback, not opting to use it. But look for the afterlife vacuums. He has been on point so far, and he gets another one. Gosh. On to Madara, up to the high ground. This guy makes it look easy. But that's where having Avenger the Force Staff does come in handy. And they'll continue working on the big rock. Well, that's Meteor used. Committing a lot and of dive. the bigger AoE spells here, but Roche dropping quickly. They're going to have to commit quick, fast, in a hurry if they want to get the job done. Walking into the pit, Scandal throws out the Deathly Blast, connects on two. Oh, almost bringing down Madara, but he pops the Omni Slash. The Zuso comes out, BKPs and Pipe all there. The Venge is going to get massacred. Madara's very low in the middle of this. He's just running in, committing onto Ramses. He's almost dead. Somebody kill that Juggernaut. They blink forward, but they turn the wrong way. They can't finish the Samurai Man. Finally, they get him. Sardar almost there with the two hero crush in time. Would have probably meant the death of Ramses and maybe Kinar as well with the Jug auto attacking there, but it doesn't happen. They lose three. That's a dieback on the Slardar as well. And this is well going to be the Roshan and possibly a lane of Rex. One of the really good things about Lycan against Jug is that the Wolves can kill the Healing Ward. So they don't have that to synergize with the Oracle ulti. So instead of popping out of that ult at full health, Jug is still nearly dead. And 
chase down and killed. Otherwise, they easily win that fight. That slaughter stun a second earlier could have changed things. Yeah, if he stuns there, for sure the Lycan's dead. And if you get like a lucky bash or two, you probably kill the Night Stalker as well. So, I really would have liked to see him go for life steal here. There's no life steal on the jug. No one bought a Vlad's. So I think it's really important to have you life steal during the Ami Slash while your Oracle ulted. Oh, that, really yeah, that's true. So it really adds up. I imagine they'd try to get one on the Venge, ideally, but Spartan not really farming all that well. Here comes the Siege. The nukes on the Ramses. And now they're going to go for the initiation here. Kanar getting swapped in, but immediately just flicks back. And Ramses going to engage. Has the Phoenix assisting him. And man fighting with Madara. Late into the Juggernaut. They kill off the tower. More importantly, though, they want these racks. Empire focusing on objectives. Remember, they already got the top lane. They're going to stabilize. Take the bottom lane. Now they hold a two to none advantage here. Two full lanes caved in. That's been them. Well, they came back 15,000 gold. They came back almost 20,000 experience. But they've not come back in terms of actual buildings. And now they find themselves one lane away from the Mega Creeps. Sustains, gold remains. It's one of the big benefits to having a Lycan. Any advantage can easily translate to objectives. So, so much building damage. And it was, it was right after when you're like, uh, is he starting to fall off now? He couldn't really man fight the Juggernaut last time, but... I still may struggle a bit to do that in a 101, but with the Butterfly especially now complete, but... He's the one that mows down the buildings. Lycan's actually right behind Terrorblade and tower damage. In the game. I'm trying to think of anyone. Why? I guess there was that like that period where we'd see like the Razors with the Ags refreshers who were pretty disgusting, but you need it takes a while to you know get to that point. That's a huge investment. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is there anyone else who does more tower damage? I don't think so. At not least really. not at that pace. Like, Maybe a very farm lone druid. Yeah, Tiny can get there as well. Yeah. I guess Chaos Knight's illusions are really strong as well for that, but usually you see teams have ways to deal with them. Here comes Papa Scandal. And speaking of, you mentioned the level level 22. Well, he's got it now, so this man is ready to go with the dream combo. Massive Deafening Blast officially online now at Venom. Hanging on for dear life, checking out buybacks for what could be their last moments of this game. They've only got it on the Zeus, the Oracle. None of the other cores have it. Jug forced to buyback previously. Butterfly on the Jug. I think Ramses buys an MKB himself if he dies under. Just win the fight. Has the gold for it. Relatively soon. Well, not a buyback then, but. Buybacks are overrated. <laughs> Unless you're playing Chinese Dota, then there's, they're never overrated. I will say, actually, there has been a shift where a lot of the Chinese players don't really save for it nearly as much as they used to, but still seems a bit, bit more prioritized there. I remember watching a game. A game? DK or Vici, Burning was playing Medusa, and at a point had like two items. It was like Lincoln's saved 7,000 gold. <laughs> and we had no idea why. But it was burning, so yeah. Can't question. And they ended up winning. Can't it was one of the greatest comebacks in Dota, and it worked. So whatever, <laughs> I guess. What you do. Yeah, but it, it definitely feels like now that you know buybacks are uh, sure. So they so they, they can win a game, and so you do want to save for occasionally. But there's also the plenty of times where it's like, yeah, get an MKB now. You can kill the jug on your first life. You don't need the second life to probably lose a man fight to him anyway. So. Time will tell if he opts to save for it. For the time being, though, still has holding onto the Aegis here. About one minute to go, so not clear if Empire is actually going to try for the Megas with this or if they'll just chill. More items coming out. The late game being accessed fully here by Scandals as he now completes a Bloodthorn. Giving his team even more burst damage to deal with the... Oh, looks like Courier got sniped by... I believe it was by Kanar, but uh, didn't have anything on it. Hard to go shopping when there's an angry vampire prowling about. I'm surprised they're not trying to end the game with his eight. This is something you wouldn't see a Chinese team have this attempt to win. It's well, it's down now, I guess. So they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to wait, or they go without it, which is also possible. The other thing is, it is gonna give some time here for the radiant buybacks to cool down. 
if they opt to save for them. Jug still 1,600 gold short, but only two and a half minutes away from having his. And Slardar, only 400 away. So... Things stabilizing a bit for Edfinim as far as the buyback situation goes, but they do still find themselves down two, lane of, two lanes of racks with all tier threes and the glyph up for the Dyer. So we could be in for a long one here, Swindles. There's the MK. And he's also got buyback, so best of both worlds for Ramses. Big problem with these forts for Empire. Like, they've got... Is that the Midas now for almost 30 minutes? He has a Lotus Orb. He's probably going to go for a Hex next. Night Stalker has been doing Night Stalker things all game. And at that point, you've got a lot of ways to just jump and, and burst someone like the Jug or the Zeus. and Or even the, the Slaughter. You can swap one of them out, but can't necessarily save them all. If those abilities are on cooldown for whatever reason, then could easily just be the kill that nets you uh, the final lane of Rax in the game. But Empire's gonna slow roll it. They'll push in bottom. Let's see, Ramsey's in afterlife, chilling in the jungle. Sipping on some cocktails. Advent I'm pretty much just forced to wait uh, for Empire to come to them. I just I would have liked to see Empire be a little more aggressive around the this done this team has done a lot of maturing, but well. Oh, uh, as you say nice. that, here comes the aggression. It's on to Madara bottom lane. Has the buyback at 50 gold in 40 seconds. So it's not the end of the world if he dies. The bench, however, does not have furs. Down for a minute now, forced to commit that. This could end up costing them heavily, and now they need to get something out of it. Omni Slash going on, but oh, simply not sufficient. Ramsey's easily able to tank through that one. As Skylark's going to back away. Slithers to the south side. The Juggernaut getting dealt with, completely controlled by this Invoker. And now Kanar's going to move on to him. Just chain hex after chain hex. Feels like Juggernaut spent the entire team fight either running for his life or disabled, and despite the false promise, he will explode down for 100. Ed Finham might be entirely out of options here. As game number two could well be drawing to a close. Ed Finham closing in on the, the loss here. Empire nearly have it. They're going to try to push. Uh, actually, Skylark pushing himself forward as the Juggernaut will buy back. They try to hold the base. So another buyback down seven minutes where they're going to have a tough time here. Skylark. Oh, aggression from the Slardar. Wants to go back in. But Lycan's already morphing and running straight for the pit. Would be a minimum respawn rush if it's up. They're on their last legs here, though. One more bad fight, and, and that's probably it. They just have too many methods of lockdown on Empire, and it's impossible for them not to get the initiation. Adfinim actually just need to be running towards a fight, Zeus ult, and pray that they're close enough to initiate. That's kind of what has to happen. If they don't get the jump, like, if you look at net worth, they're really, really far behind. Okay. Basher. So, even more control now for the Jug. Maybe a chance Ramses can man up on him with the uh, completed Abyssal Blade coming soon. Speaking of that Jug, also is eating a Moon Shard. So, at this point, Madar's pretty much done. I'm not really sure there's any other item he could buy at this point. And if he did, he'd be trading something out. He's pretty much out of it. Zeus, as you mentioned, already more or less like your peak Zeus inventory. Nothing huge that he can really buy that's going to drastically alter the game. And it's not like the supports of the Slardar are farming. So that's been him very much on the back foot here. Desperately hoping with a smoke. I think this is their last one for a while. And eight, eight and a half minutes, no smoke. And although Roshan is up, they're not going to find any kills, so if they want to go for an age, if they do so, a great peril, and it's actually Empire who said, screw the Roshan, we're just going to smoke, we're just going to barrel down the mid lane, we're going to backdoor your racks, destroy wow. them, it's a slaughter, go <laughs> for the jugular, it's a huge <laughs> resounding success, and well, even if they lose a hero too, it seems well worth it. That was a, I mean, you wanted That's more aggression, play. we got yeah. it, Swindles. There we go. There's the play. Empire now turning back for Skylark, who has been isolated, they catch the slaughter retreating, the egg gets dropped to try and protect the team, while Juggernaut does manage to decapitate one in the form of the Night Stalker. He tries to deal with the Phoenix, can't quite do it. There's the swap out from Spartan. Do they get more? Thug blinking in. It's onto Ramsey's end afterlife. He's committing. That's a confident Zeus. And it looks like it may work out. Okay, afterlife getting punished. Will be finished off as well. As you can see, Scandal either hoping for a straggler or maybe looking to sneak around. But they're up against Megas. 
This is still going to be very difficult. Boots of Travel level 2 now being bought by Ed Phantom. Do they find Scandal? They're going to find him as well. Catching him out with the Venge. They'll get the kill. Has the gem now. Another nuke. Oh, what? no. He loses the fish. And the Juggernaut Illusion. Oh, barely with the Wave of Terror. Clips him at distance. Oh, hang on to your hats. This one ain't over yet. That was a pretty damn big gold swing. They did have to buy back on the Slardar again, though. But Ed Phantom showing some real gumption here. They just need a way to give life steal, Juggernaut. Please, someone buy a blast. I think he's, I think you said that like 25 minutes ago. I d I did, man. Uh, the pain feels bad if you're the Jug and you're just trying to survive in these fights. But again, uh, I guess Spartan could buy it now. Spartan's got about 2,000 gold. I'm watching and just face palming. I want to help you. I want to help you, please. They can't hear you, man. They can't hear you. All right, Empire. Do they do they buy back here on their Invoker? Do they try to hold without him. Madara's a coming for you. That, this man hits pretty hard. Let me tell you. The Rax doesn't really help them. All the lanes are pushed out here. No, oh, they try to engage on Madara. Manta getting popped nice and early, but there's the crush. Focusing on Ramsey. Zombie slash available. Not using it just yet. Oh, he gets a Abyssal. Gets controlled, or uh, rather bashed, but he manages to leap oh, directly into the Lycan. This could be the dream. Omni Slash, he's deep behind enemy lines now, though, and he's getting focused down. They got to keep this chug alive. No buyback for three minutes. Can they save him? Hexed for days, for nights on end, but he does escape. That leaves Scandal free to throw the combo out. Unleashes the pain as a Sun Strike has a fish. Almost connects him with Dar. Now the tornado also. Glimpsing the jug as a double buyback. This is the last straw. They might lose Madara though. He ran back in and in was the wrong way to go. He dies. The GG instantly called and we are going to a game three with a double dieback there on the Zeus. The Juggernaut as well. Four heroes dead when the dust settles. It's Empire salvaging the series and taking game two. They took their sweet time, but they did close out the game effectively. I like that play call. Just Screw it, let's back door. Glyph's down. And it, w it was a full Move. back door. The creep wave was not there. Not yeah, something. At Venom, were, it, the, the timing was so good because Roche was about, could have been respawning then. So it's like, well, we should go. They're going to Roche, surely, but Empire.